all. This is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So the discussion today, pandemic is wrapping up. However, from the Washington University School of Medicine, the University of Washington School of Medicine, the researchers have created the next generation vaccine for coronaviruses, SARS-CoV-2. They have been working on it since 2016 for coronaviruses. So they have a platform now that can be used for so many things. So let's look at what they did. So I want to start with here. This is Romy Amaro's work. This is a spike protein. We need to understand this protein and a part of it today because I'm going to use that in our explanation. This is her model of a spike protein. It took her 190 days, not just her, her team and her. 190 days, terabytes of data that she says they processed and multiple zooms into this, this computer-generated model to see how correct it is. Just imagine, almost a year in producing this. And what we are interested in here, first of all, thanks to her work, this top loop over here, that empty little thread, that is the receptor binding domain of the spike protein. This is the area that is used by the spike protein to bind to ACE2. One more visualization here. This is also, again, Rami Amaro. And this is a visualization. This is zoomed in. So if you see here, this blue one is the binding region. And we're going to talk about it. So just once again, to give her credit and a shout out, what a journey this work has been. 194 days, countless Zooms, so many terabytes of data, so proud of this whole team, new collaborations, help from and sharing with so many in the community. So this, these uh, models are used in this article, and this article is beautifully written. Uh, today, everything is just so fascinating. I think you'll love it. This is a SARS-CoV-2. The only second thing that, after the res receptor binding domain, the second thing that I would re request you to keep in mind is this is a SARS-CoV-2. A SARS-CoV-2 normally has anywhere from 20 to 40 spike proteins on it. Some literature says 60, some even say 80. Anyways, this article says 24 to 40 or so. Actually, let's just go and quickly see it. So they say over here, 24, 24 to 40. So, and this article is beautiful to read as well. So keep these in mind. And now let's go to this. This is drbean.com. And this is the article that we're going to talk about. There are two researchers involved in this one. One is David and the other one is Neil. So, and they are biochemistry. One is professor and the other one is assistant professor. They have their own labs as, as well in University of Washington School of Medicine. This is their work, beautiful work. So let's start with my um, diagram. So this is the next generation of the vaccine. So you could say, what is the next generation of vaccine? We have messenger RNA vaccines, which are supposed to be the modern vaccines. We have uh, adenovirus-based vaccines or vector-based vaccines. We have inactivated virus vaccines. We have Novavax-like vaccines, which are sub-protein vaccine. How come we have a new type? And I hope you're excited about seeing a new type of vaccine. So let's see. So this vaccine is built in the King and Wiesler lab. So these two, doc, uh, these two professors' labs. And right now it is being um, promoted or manufactured and then scaled by SK, SK Biosciences. The properties of this vaccine, again, my diagrams. <laughs> so first of all, they call it Vax Zevria. That is the name. Vax Zevria or GPB 510, that is a code name. They had been working on this platform since 2016. It is a sub protein vaccine, but it has a twist in it. 
what is the twist? The twist is, it is a self-assembling nanoparticle. What does that mean? So think about it. This is what they did. They used a computer to create or model 3D pieces of proteins. Imagine somebody is making a toy and they're using a computer to model small pieces of toys and they are making them in a way that when you put those pieces together, they can assemble in the form of a sphere. Right? It's, it, this is a beauty. So they used a computer to model 3D pieces, which are actually going to become proteins. And when these are put together, they will self-assemble. They will fit together like a puzzle and make a sphere. And then, so now this is a tiny microscopic or maybe even electron microscopic particle of protein. It's a tiny muscle, <laughs> protein, not muscle. But just to evoke an emotion here, it's tiny protein ball. On top of that ball, now you can decorate it with various kind of proteins on the surface of it. This is like a Lego ball on which you can add more Legos on the surface. Th this is amazing and beautiful. So these back parts that are attached to this ball or are decorating it, these are the receptor binding domains. They are not the spike protein, just the receptor binding domain. So what are the two unique things now? Number one, it is a protein ball. So we, for example, Novavax doesn't have it. Second thing, it is not spike proteins attached on it. These are receptor binding domains and many of them, up to 60 of them, attached on it. Why is that interesting? Why is this second generation? It is interesting because now they have an array. <clears throat> they have an array of receptor binding domains. That means this particular sphere will actually look like this particular virus. Right? So this virus has this little ball and then on the ball are the spike proteins and at the end of the spike proteins are the receptor binding domains. So here what they said, cut out the spike protein and just leave the receptor binding domain and put that on this ball. And interestingly, these things are self-assembling. So you put them together, they assemble in this form. Like a sci-fi movie where those robots assemble together. Okay, so enough of that praise. Now, someone was saying, is it really safe and effective? I try to use the words from the authors when I'm presenting their work. It is safe or not safe or effective or not effective as more trials would happen and as production would use it, we'll know. They call it safe and effective as part of trial phase two. The second important thing that they're saying, that this structure, this structure, creates a very unique opportunity for the immune system to look at the receptor binding domain again and again and again and again, instead of looking at the whole spike protein and making antibodies for the various parts of the spike protein, now the immune system is only able to see the array of receptor binding domain and it would only attack or create the antibodies or the select the T cells that would attack receptor binding domain. That means the specificity is going to be very high. That means the capability of neutralizing is going to be very high, correct? So that is what we would see here. So it is more effective than Oxford AstraZeneca, even in its lower dose. That's one. Second, because it is in lower dose, it can actually be manufactured at scale with a cheap price. It is simple to manufacture because these are self-assembling particles. So you don't have to play with them a lot. It is scalable to manufacture. You can manufacture at scale. It is stable at lower temperatures or you don't have to deep freeze it. So this is a vaccine that can be easily transported, easily being produced in the, let's say, developing countries or emerging markets. 
University of Washington has already made the license for this royalty free during the pandemic. Unfortunately, or fortunately, why would I say unfortunately? Unfortunately for someone who wants to make this vaccine. Fortunately, the pandemic is over. But during the pandemic, they are saying if somebody uses it, it's free. Now, phase three trial of this vaccine. Can you imagine that this was happening and we didn't even know? So that's my bad. I should have known and brought it to you. Phase three trial was happening and, and that was a, <coughs> excuse me, multinational cohort, 18 plus. <laughs> I laugh at my own people over here. So 4,037 participants. They were given two doses four weeks apart. And what they observed was following. So imagine this is Oxford AstraZeneca and this is the GPB 510. Even at a low dose, and I want to zoom in for you so you can enjoy the picture here. <laughs> I, I drew this. <laughs> so even at a low dose, this vaccine creates more antibodies. It actually helps more um, B cells to proliferate. And I forgot to tell you, it has an adjuvant in it, which is the GlaxoSmithKline's adjuvant. Then it causes more T cell triggers as well. It causes more proliferation or activation of T cells as well, compared to AstraZeneca, which they compared with. So more T cells, more antibodies at a low dose compared to this one. Now they're seeking authorization in South Korea. And South Korea has already signed a purchase contract of 10 million doses. I wonder why didn't they try it here? I'm sure that we all know Novavax is already stuck and not getting moving forward. So if fully approved, then WHO's COVAX program, which is going to help with the vaccine systems to, to take or vaccine programs to scale to the world, that would be used for global supply. It elicits strong B response as well. And what they're doing now is they are going to use, so they've already done some animal trials with the third dose against Omicron, and it has been effective. So now they are going to do a human trial on 750 people with the third dose. So I want to show you that part here. And the only thing is that their spellings for Omicron are wrong. So you can't search with Omicron. Omicron is what they've written. In a recent preprint, a third dose of the vaccine was found to confer strong protection against the Omicron variant of COVID-19 in animals. SK Biosciences will initiate testing third dose in 750 humans, adults, human adults soon. So that is the new vaccine. What is the takeaway? The takeaway is this vaccine is totally unique. And the um, researchers were saying that once we have this platform, you can stick whatever antigen on it and decorate it with those and you can use it. So it is a subprotein based vaccine. The subprotein is not the spike protein, but RBD. That's the difference in Novavax. The proteins, the ball, the nanoparticle, it's not a lipid nanoparticle, it's a protein nanoparticle. That means it doesn't need to enter a cell. It doesn't need to carry any messenger RNA in it. So that is how it is different from mRNA vaccines. And then the, the power of this vaccine is that because there is this array of the RBD's receptor binding domains on it, immune system can only see the receptor binding domains with it. So the efficiency of producing neutralizing antibodies by immune system becomes very powerful. And that is the power of this vaccine. So very quickly now, this is one link which um, I discussed. Then they have other discussions as well for, for example, the RBD parts and other parts of the spike protein. Then they talk about adjuvants as well. Then they have this uh, tested COVID vaccine discussion, structure and function and antigenicity of the spike protein. 
then this is the license from the University of Washington. So if you are someone who's listening and want to make this, uh, manufacture this vaccine, this is their license and this is free. And then this is the COVAX program by WHO for moving the vaccines to the emerging markets. Then this is a Google Drive link by University of Washington where they have these authors interview in it and so you can play that and you can hear it. And then finally, once again, this. And now, after this discussion, we will go to Cool Beans Cafe Live. And Meeple Art had asked me yesterday to spell out the whole name. I'm going to put the link here in the description as well, uh, in the chat as well. So after this, we will then meet at the Cool Beans Cafe Live and we'll have our chit chat over there. Thank you very much. And please like, subscribe, and share. There are a few links in the description. If you would like to purchase Dr. Bean's access, drbean.com premium content at a very reasonable price, there is a link there. Or you can buy me a coffee, or you can use PayPal to support this work, or you can become Substack, Substack member. All links are there, or you can become a patron. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon on the other side, meaning in the Cool Beans Cafe. Thank you and bye.